You're listening to Megiddo Radio. Megiddo Radio is a radio ministry of Megiddo Media. For more, visit our website at megiddoradio.com. That's megiddoradio.com. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. This is Paul Flynn with Megiddo Radio for the 10th of June, 2017. Thank you all for tuning in. On tonight's program, we're going to be talking about Bernie Sanders. Now, a couple of days ago, in the Senate, the United States Senate, he was talking to Russell Vaught, who was he was nominated by President Donald Trump to be the director, the deputy director of the Office of Management and Budget. Now, right before the show, I was actually going to do a completely different topic, uh, which will probably end up being Monday's show now at this point Monday show is usually going to be audio only but I'm going to cover the show <laughs> I really wanted to cover something else to be honest but I felt like I needed to cover this today as it is fairly recent and very blatant in what's going on around us at the moment leftist bigotry and it needs to be called what it is. And it's just hypocrisy and bigotry. The, the left, with its champion Bernie Sanders, claims to be the champions of freedom of religion and all this kind of thing. Actually, what it is, it's anti-Christianity. We'll go through this clip now where Bernie Sanders takes a massive exception to the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And anybody would hold to that, basically any Christians. Yes, it is anti-Christian. We'll also look at some of the response from the left. Lord willing, we get a chance to look at that from the Young Turks. And hopefully I'll remember the point, you know, you have to be careful with Young Turks clips because uh, the Young Turks is vile trash. But I'm just going to look at some of the responses and they are very, very pro-Bernie and they have been throughout the whole campaign and similar like that. Uh, I just have to remember the point where there's a curse word in there, so there's a lot of swearing in there. They think they're really cool when they put that in there. And also going to talk about the aftermath, a little bit of the aftermath of the election in the UK and some of the fallout of that, which is it's just it's just kind of astonishing that the Conservatives ran such an awful campaign. They really just like kind of kamikaze pilot. The La- Labour Party were you know a couple of months ago seen as a complete embarrassment and just going to be decimated and it's not because they were or well organized or ran a good campaign or anything but we will talk about that later but it's just ah oh, how do we come to this in the UK but we'll look at some of the aftermath and how the left has responded yet again to and look I don't see the conservative party as being conservative at all be honest they're not they're very left in a lot of different areas and things like that uh but their massive objection to the dup the democratic unionist party okay we'll start off with bernie sanders in the budget committee and we will respond to it and we'll try and get through as much as possible today let's check there that i'm actually recording now I've talked about Bernie Sanders before. Uh, if you remember, if anybody's interested, go back to uh, if, type it into MegidaRadio.com. I have a program on Bernie Sanders, and he's meeting with the Pope, and he had massive time for the Pope, obviously, because of his views that are very socialist. So let's hear his um, grueling grilling of Russell Vaughn. Their, um, their letter states, and I quote, we write to express our deep concerns about the nomination of Russell Vogt to the position of Deputy Director of the White House Office of Management and Budget. Mr. Vogt has denigrated American Muslims and the Muslim faith. His writings demonstrate a clear hostility to religious pluralism and freedom that disqualify him for any appointment, including that of De- Deputy Director of the OMD. So, for the record. In the piece that I referred to that you wrote for a publication called Resurgent, you wrote, Muslim, quote, Muslims do not simply have a deficient theology. They do not know God because they have rejected Jesus Christ, his son, and they stand condemned. End of quote. Do you believe, do you believe that that statement is Islamophobic? <laughs> Just to get into that. 
Um, this is the Christian religion. Jesus said in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other way to the Father. None. He's not our way. He is the way. So this is the Christian religion. There's no other way. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through Mary. It's, you know, he claimed to Roman Catholicism. It was being co-mediatrix with Jesus Christ. There's no other way. That is the Christian faith. Now, if you go to the Muslim faith, they would say Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his messenger. That's, that, you know, fairly word for word what the Shahada says. You know, you, you declare you are, and then you are a Muslim. And anybody who doesn't do that, who doesn't believe that, is condemned as well. Hmm? Okay, there's different variants of the Jewish faith today. There's more conservative, liberal, and things like that. But by and large, I mean, what's the point in believing this way if you do not believe that all others... If this... If, if, I mean, God doesn't care. God doesn't have standards. Does he? So all these different religions disagree, of course. Come on. They believe in their way to God. This is Christianity. This is biblical Christianity. If this is, if this grates you, you're not a Christian. It's explicitly clear. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. There's no other way to take away your sin. Every one of us is condemned before God outside of Jesus Christ, but it's only them who put their personal trust and faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are saved. They are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Otherwise, what Jesus did was ridiculous. Imagine a person comes to earth and says that he's the Son of God. That he is the one talked about in the prophecies in the Old Testament. Not a big fan of C.S. Lewis, but he was right when he said, you know, he's either Lord, li liar, or lunatic. Is he Lord? Well, you should bow the knee to him. Is he a liar? Usually liberals just say, well, you know, he was a good moral teacher, all this kind of stuff. Or was he a loon? He was just crazy. And we know from the Old Testament scriptures, which speak about this. Now, Bernie Sanders apparently is Jewish. Even from Isaiah 53, verse 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. We'll go there. What was the significance of that? See, either you believe the book or you don't. Islam believes if you... Ex what's the Islamophobia thing? So is Bernie Sanders now pushing for Sharia law? How dare you blaspheme Islam? That's, that was the first question. Do you believe that question is Islamophobic? What else can you take away from that? So, Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And just read through Isaiah 53. It's obviously talking about Jesus Christ hundreds of years before he walked the earth. Isaiah was penned somewhere around 700 BC. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his days and he shall prolong his Days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. And that is justify, justification, always used in the scriptures, in a declarative forensic sense. To be declared righteous. As in, the opposite of condemnation. Condemnation is to be declared unrighteous. Guilty before God. And if you're a Christian, you believe the scriptures. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Surely that is 
not some kind of new thing. Is, is that Islamophobic? Well, how would ask the Sikh is his views Islamophobic or the uh, uh, Judaism? How about Islam, how much they hate the Jews and teach people in Palestine to hate and despise the Jews in Israel? Why that question? Why? Absolutely not, Senator. I'm a Christian, and I believe in a Christian set of principles based on my faith. Uh, that post, as I stated in the questionnaire to this committee, was to defend my alma mater, Wheaton College, a Christian school that has a statement of faith that includes the centrality of Jesus Christ for salvation. And Again, I apologize. I do, forgive me. I, we just don't have a lot of time. Do you believe that people in the Muslim religion stand condemned? Is that your view? Again, Senator, I'm... Islam rejects Jesus Christ. It sees anybody, if you claim that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're attributing partners to them, and then you are condemned to hellfire for doing such a thing. That's what the Quran de declares. What if a Muslim was here and they were grilled on that? Does that ever happen? Of course it doesn't happen. That would be seen as Islamophobic. But when it comes to a Christian, it's open season. This isn't a new the. This is the teaching for thousands of years. I'm a Christian, and I wrote that piece... Well, what does According that say? The statement of faith of Wheaton. I understand that. I don't know how many Muslims there are in America. I really don't know. Probably a couple of million. Are you suggesting that all of those people stand condemned? What about Jews? They stand condemned too? Senator, I'm a Christian. I, I understand you are a Christian, but this country is made up of people who are not just. I understand that Christianity is the majority religion. Whoa, he was getting angry there. How dare you say that there is a whole massive section of people who are not just before God. How dare you say that I'm not per, you know, that all of us are not wonderful people and see this is socialism. This is the, this is why socialism and Christianity are completely opposites of each other. Socialism says people deserve X, Y, and Z. Why? Because they're good people. Even though every single thing we know about human beings shows that we're not good. We tend to destroy. We, we hate. Create wars. Take a look at human history. We are not good. But that, but that is socialism. Man deserves X, Y, and Z, so it has to be provided for him or it's injustice. There's some good in man, and so he deserves... No, he's not. Jesus said, if you so much as look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery. Examine your thought life if you think for a second that you are just before God. If you, if you think you are righteous, even your thoughts... Even what you covet after, something that does not belong to you, is sin and will condemn you to hell. Hell is the righteous, holy wrath of God. But he hates this. He hates this idea. Now, rather than being what liberals claim to be, well, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe, you can hold, you hold whatever views you want, but it just is the government, no! Of course, <laughs> believe whatever you want. Just don't be a Christian who actually believes the gospel. And it's astonishing how many in the left, leftist media support Bernie Sanders on this. Now, America is not a Christian country. It wasn't a Christian country. The, the, the Constitution has unchristian elements in there. First Amendment is not 
you can't find that in the scriptures. Where in a Christian nation, people can just say whatever they want, believe whatever they want, and it doesn't matter. Even though Romans 13 talks about they're ministers of God, they're there to serve God. How do you determine right and right or wrong? You see, the left has more respect for the Muslim pushing Sharia than for a Christian who just simply believes the Bible and he's not pushing anything. Doesn't that say a lot about the, how much the left hates, not just the left, anybody outside of Jesus Christ hates the gospel? And you might say, I don't hate the gospel. But you do. If you, you, if you do not trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you hate him. There's no middle ground with this. If he is the source of all good, all truth, the only way to the Father, and you reject all that is good, that is hatred towards him. So now Christians are being asked, it's not a new thing, by the way. You know, Christians are being, you know, hounded out of the media, hounded out of any kind of job, because, because of what the gospel represents is that anybody outside of Jesus Christ is condemned before God, has no hope. But there are other people who have different religions in this country and around the world. In your judgment, do you think that people who are not Christians are going to be condemned? Thank you for probing on that question. As a Christian, I believe that all individuals are made in the image of God and are worthy of dignity and respect. Now, I wish Russell T. Vaught just answered it much more clearly and just said, yes. Anybody outside of Jesus Christ, that's the gospel. Could have answered it much better. Unfortunately, he didn't. Gave a very, you know, PC-ish kind of answer. It's, but, like, you know, at the same time, it's not easy in those positions, it's easy to criticize from a you know from a radio program, a TV, or whatever, you know, because when when the pressure's on, trying to think on the, on your feet and stuff like that, so trying to be gracious towards him. But I don't know how strong his Christian faith is. I don't know much about him to be honest. I've only just seen this clip. I heard people talking about it for a few days, and I, to be honest, I only just saw it tonight. But. Again, it just exposes more of the leftist hypocrisy and I felt like I needed to cover it. Regardless of their religious beliefs, I believe that, that as a Christian, that's how I should treat all individuals. And do you think your statement that you put into that publication, they do not know God because they've rejected Jesus Christ the Son and they stand condemned? Do you think that's respectful of other religions? So now... <laughs> So now we have to change the gospel in order to be respectful. How about the Muslim be respectful of Christianity? No. How about we say, we tell the Muslim to change the, the place in the Quran that says, do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends, for they are friends of each other. Shall we do that? Hmm? Are we going to be consistent on this? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Well, well why would you do that? Are we going to tell the Muslim, go to Hadith and change any part where it says about that would be victorious through terror and things like that. Would that happen? Oh, no. No, that would be Islamophobic. It's just astonishing that apparently educated men, or an educated man like Bernie Sanders, but this, this is the thing about Bernie Sanders is <laughs> he, he, he doesn't really say anything. Even in his speeches, it's just more free stuff. Free tuition. Free college. People deserve this. This is a right. This is a... Okay, how are we going to pay for all this? Oh, right. Again, it's based on diametrically opposed worldviews. You believe people are good. Look, what do we deserve? We deserve death and hell. I deserve death and hell. By the mercy of God that he regenerated me and made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. We're not better than anybody else. We're to love our neighbor as ourselves. If you're a citizen of a country, 
I'm to love my neighbor. None of my neighbors around this area, from what I know, are Christians. I'm in like the near vicinity where I live. But I still am to respect them, and if I get a chance to share the gospel with them... <laughs> anyway. Senator, I wrote a post based on being a Christian and attending a Christian school. And look, he goes back over and over and says, I'm a Christian! That's what the Christians believe. That's what Christians believe. That's what we believe. Why is this an issue? Because you hate the gospel. Why not, next time a Muslim is there, or do you just want atheists? Oh, how about you say that all religions are stupid? Like atheists, well... Who do we? Who are we gonna have in government then? According, just if you're gonna have Bernie Sanders as standard, or is it just Christians who are barred from government? That has a statement of faith that speaks clearly with regard to the centrality of Jesus Christ in salvation. I would simply say, Mr. Chairman, that look and e look, the centrality of Jesus Christ is not enough. I mean, Jesus Christ paid the sin that it, it is finished to tell us that he paid in full. Even, look, and there's a Protestant person who subscribes to the Westminster Confession of Faith that would see the Pope of Rome as the Antichrist, that man of sin is son of perdition, but even Rome would see that Christ is, say that Christ is central to salvation and all this kind of thing. Did you take up this issue with Pope Francis? Of course not. It's different from Catholicism, and if you criticize Roman Catholicism, it's anti-Catholic bashing and all this kind of stuff. But if somebody's an evangelical, Hmm, it's a little different, but we were to expect this. This nominee um, is really not someone who is what this country is supposed to be about. Just to comment on that briefly, I mean, that, that is not to be the standard we're supposed to go by. But if somebody lives in the United States, that is the law of the land, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and things like that. Not, not that Bernie Sanders has, has any interest in, in the Constitution. I mean, come on. The Democrats, are they fans of the Second Amendment? Freedom of speech? Give me a break. You know, until it's quote-unquote hate speech. So they don't, they don't believe in this kind of stuff. It's, it's nonsense, especially the Second Amendment. So is, this is what this country is, all, you know, the United States of America is all about, even though he stands against what, what the founding fathers were being against. But whatever the case is, with that, <laughs> the whole point of the founding fathers and the Bill of Rights and the Constitution all, and the system of government that they played in, there was to be no religious test. I am not saying I agree with that as a covenant or as a Reformed Presbyterian, that is not a Christian way. That's a very... It's a very Masonic way to set up government. And it's, you know, it's unraveling before your eyes today. I mean, it took a long time, but I digress. Yes, it was the majority religion of the land. Yes, most people in America at the time were Christians. But there was a little bit of pragmatism, but I digress. But I've talked about that in other shows. You know, Thomas Paine being a massive influence and things like that. The pain of pain, without the pain of pain, the sword of Washington would have wielded in vain. And Thomas Paine despised and hated the gospel. But back then, how do I put it? There was to be no religious test. And the whole point was, you know, they believed in freedom of religion. Complete freedom of religion. It reaches a massive problem when you get to the point when you have a religion that is completely against that, which is Islam. Isn't it getting challenged now? If you say that all religions are the same, how about Satanism? Islam that wants to, you know, it's, you know, it says, you know, in Wahhabi Islam and all that kind of thing, that it's not a sin for a Muslim to kill a non-Muslim. 
Now it's quoting from a imam in Melbourne, Australia, who's talking about that that incident a few days ago with the Saudi Arabian national football team who would not stand with the Australians in a minute of, to observe a minute's silence before the game. And and then he commented on that. Was, uh, there was outrage over it. But is anybody calling out the Muslims on that? No, of course not. Hey, there's a person going into power. He believes the gospel. He's a Christian. Christians are not allowed in government. That's the message of Bernie Sanders. Why just Christianity? Why not any other religion? Why, why don't we see any equivalent of this? Now, you might just say, oh, well, that's just Bernie Sanders. But Bernie Sanders, how much of the, the left supports Bernie Sanders? He's not some fringe character. Yes, his views are. He's a complete communist at times. But how many young people support him? How much of the country supported him? It wasn't for the superdelegates in the Democratic Party. He probably might have, you know, and if it wasn't for the fact that they were all on board for Hillary Clinton, he might have got it. That resonates with people. Free stuff. Because they all feel like victims, and they all blame everybody else for their lack of opportunities and all this kind of stuff. Not that they, not that they want to work hard or anything like that. It's just, they just want everything to be landed on the plate for them. And who promises things like that? Bernie Sanders and oh, Jeremy Corbyn as well in, in Labour and all the people. And it's always interesting how it's people who have no interest in politics, no interest in how the system works. They don't care about that kind of stuff. They just want to party and drink. And then every now and again, we'll go, woo, woo, woo. For, it's for the biggest leftist. Hey, that guy's going to give me free stuff. Why wouldn't I vote for him? Of course they say, no, nah, it's not socialism. They're just helping the people. Yeah, tell that to the people in Venezuela who are eating their own dogs. How's it working out in South America? Bigger government. If you want the government to do more things and to control more things, it will take more power, it will tax more, it will control and be a bureaucratic nightmare. Go to a place like Italy. Seriously, Italy is a bureaucratic nightmare. I'll give you one example. Is I, I, part of the European Union, I'm a Euro, you know, European citizen, whatever, but um, I hate that title, to be honest. I'm an Irishist, and that's it. But I was over there anyway in Italy, and I, I was trying to get a tell a story to a lot of people, to be honest, just to, just to show the insanity of the bureaucracy over there. It's kind of well known over there. You have to visit about 10 offices just to get anything done and then probably end up back at office number one where you went the first time and eventually it's going to you know, get done if you maybe complain enough to the person in the office because they all don't know what they're doing. They'll cross over each other. No Italian would dispute about this, by the way. I was trying to get a 50cc. Uh, kind of like a tiny, it wasn't even a motorbike, it was kind of like a scooter, but it was so small. In Ireland, you wouldn't have to do any paperwork. I don't even think you'd need a license or any kind whatsoever, even though we're not, we're not the freest country or anything like that. When you search an imagination. Three months of paperwork. Seriously. For a piece of junk. So, that'll just give you an idea. Now, the re reason it took me so long was because I didn't have a residency at that time, and it's just... You need a job to have a residency, residency and job. It's just really hard. If you go to a socialist country or collectivist country, it's very hard to do anything there. Life becomes a standstill and often unbearable. And that's why so much of these countries go with the black market because the black market actually moves and isn't regulated to death. That's how groups like the mafia... And other groups like that work on the black market and things like that are seen as being popular because they see the government as being bigger crooks and they prefer them. Honestly. They become the, the legitimate government allowing people actually, rather than you know taxing... I mean, Bernie Sanders didn't, he wasn't even against the idea of 90% tax. 
private, the whole issue, you want to understand capitalism? Private property. Do you know what drove all the technology that you're using right now? We'll probably even view this show or listen to show or whatever. Capitalism. People were trying to make a profit. Interestingly enough. Okay, and they're trying, yeah, and be innovative and things like that and put food on the table. But imagine that drive gone because the government's going to give you everything you ever want. And you're just going to get the same thing as the guy down the road who doesn't do anything. I say, oh, that, that's not what it is. It's a, the hard work. Yeah, you take away the incentive for hard work. Watch it disappear. Watch the striking. Watch people demand more and more rights. And as they demand more and more rights, what they're really doing is demanding for the government to get bigger and swallow up everything. And then when that happens, they'll complain Call it capitalism for some odd reason, because somebody's a tiny bit more to the right than the other group, and blame it all on them. Happens time after time after time. So let's look at some of the leftist media responding to this. Do have people on the left condemned? I don't know, to be honest, and I haven't gone through all the responses, but this will just show, for example, the Young Turks, which is one of the worst makes us CNN look good, to be honest, honestly, in comparison to it. It's like CNN with cursing, to be honest. But the clip I'm going to show you um, doesn't have any cursing up until, if you happen to find this clip, it's from the, the Young Turks YouTube channel. Bernie Sanders destroys religious bigots during confirmation hearing. Apparently he's a religious bigot for believing the gospel. That's what they think of him. And one of the, these people on the left, along with Anna Kasparian, the person on the left just basically uh, claims to be a Christian, but also claims to be homosexual. But uh, we've dealt with that under pr programs, not possible. And um, you'll you'll know them by their fruit. So how do how do they respond to this? Wow, that was uh, an incredible exchange, and it, it's interesting to see the different interpretations of of that exchange because. What different interpretations? He believes the gospel. That is unacceptable to Bernie Sanders. And on oh, sorry, press that button again by accident. And that's unacceptable to Bernie Sanders. So, what's interpretive? Well, uh, the, the title of the video is "Religious Bigot." Oh, we're being very balanced, aren't we? The right, you know, you have publications like the National Review uh, calling out Bernie Sanders and essentially accusing him of discriminating against Christians. How dare they? Oh, I, I, I don't know how they would come to that conclusion. Which that, I mean, that wasn't my interpretation. I saw that as him um, pointing out to uh, someone who will be uh, an, a, an part of our government, right, if he gets uh, confirmed, openly and transparently saying, you know, that an entire group of people in the country will be condemned or are condemned, right? And so that kind of messaging doesn't look good, especially if you are part of our government. You're not supposed to endorse one religion over the other and whatever. So according to that logic, no religious person of any faith whatsoever can be in government. Hmm. How would atheists condemning pretty much every other religion? Should we allow atheists in? Hmm, where would this leave us with? Probably no one in the government. Really? Are you saying that no... Anyway, just it's just so ridiculous. So, um, and then Emma Green for The Atlantic shared her point of view. I want to share it with you guys, just to play devil's advocate um, and give you all perspectives, and then we can kind of discuss that. She says, Sanders used the term Islamophobia to suggest that vote fears Muslims for who they are. But in his writing, vote was contesting something different. He disagrees with what Muslims believe and does not think their faith is satisfactory for salvation. Right or wrong, this is a conviction held by millions of Americans, and many Muslims might say the same thing about Christianity. Christianity. Yeah, a Muslim does say the same thing about a Christian if they're actually a Muslim. So, um, you know, her piece sort of defended a vote, and I thought that was a really interesting perspective. But if you if you want to simplify what she's saying, 
Well, I mean, this is what his religion allows him to believe. And since a lot of other Americans. No, it's not. That's not what it, the Christianity does not allow you to believe that. If you don't believe that, you're not a Christian. End of story. Nothing more to discuss. If you do not believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, it's not Christianity anymore. It's something else. Because otherwise you're saying it's a works-based religion. It is based on what you do. It is self-righteous. Not based on the merits and the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross and the board of sin of whosoever believe in him will, that shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's John 3.16 and one of the most known verses in the Bible. And apparently most people know it. But, hmm, apparently this is new to people in the United States of America. Also believe it, whatever. I mean, I guess it is what he believes. So why are you going to, you know, criticize him for it? But there was a time in America where the majority of people believed that interracial marriage was wrong. There what is, so you're lumping in this man with racists. Hey, here, people, oh, he believes the gospel. Hey, you believe that interracial marriage is wrong. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, based on a faulty understanding of the Old Testament, often. Those who want to go back to the Old Testament and say, oh, you see, they married people from other countries and things like that. Look, that's not what it's condemning. It's condemning those a Christian is not to marry somebody from outside their faith. If you love Jesus Christ, you're not supposed to marry somebody who hates Jesus Christ. No, it doesn't matter what your skin color. What a, a major cons, you know, consideration to bring in, not skin color, but things like that, but would be cultural background, social economic background. You know, for example, if somebody grows up and you know their parents have a lot of money, I'm not saying that this. Stop somebody marrying somebody from a, from a poor background or less money to drop down and things like that. But it's something to take into account. Somebody's relatively used to living in ease. And then maybe the husband doesn't make a lot of money and things like that. Doesn't have a great job. But they have to think about this. If they're okay with that, fine, go on ahead. But they have to think about this. This will cause a strain. So people talked about that in the past and things like that. But... Based purely in skin color, that's not right. Now, there was a long time ago when it's different in the United States. It was slavery and things like that. But you had different cultures. It's a lot different now because we've got the internet. We can learn all about it and all this kind of stuff. But I digress. But just say, like, racism, right? Racism, obviously, is wrong. I think we can all agree with that. We see something like David Duke, we'll just condemn him. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. What has that got to do with the gospel? Are you saying that a Christian is the same as a racist? Hmm. There was a time in America when people thought gay marriage was wrong. <laughs> what planet are you living on, Anna Kasparian? Um... People still in America, lots of them, probably, I don't know if it's the majority, I don't know what percent exactly, believe gay marriage is wrong. Um, maybe it's a slip of the tongue. Maybe it's just a complete mistake. Uh, by the way, if you're a Christian, you do believe. Gay you know what? Gay marriage isn't even a thing. It's like a square circle. It doesn't exist. You can call it whatever you want. If, if a man claims to be married to another man, it's not marriage. It's not marriage. There was a time in America where people thought that blacks and whites should, black individuals and white individuals should use separate water fountains and mm -hmm. separate schools. Again, lumping them in with racists. Oh, Christians, they're bigots because you believe in Jesus. Oh. Schools and all that. Like, it doesn't matter what the, the majority of Americans think when it comes to these types of issues. What matters is what is the right position on the issue right how do you determine that as a i don't know what a religious background is to be honest although she is of an armenian armenian background and the young turks 
and a part of the Armenian genocide. But I digress. Anyway, but <laughs> that's for another issue. It's a strange name for a show in the Mightiest Week will be called Hitler Youth. Look it up. Anyway. So. But notice, like, like all this times when, you know, the racist card just gets constantly pulled out. What? You believe the gospel, you're a horrible human being, and you hate everybody else. Well, if we hated everybody else, we would not share the gospel with them. We, if we hated other people, we wouldn't share it with anybody. Because we want people to come to a saving knowledge of our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's hatred for us to not share that truth. You're in a burning building. Is it hatred to leave you in the burning building, or should we offer to help <laughs> and call you, here's the way out? And so if you're openly hostile or ho openly hateful toward a certain group of people in the country because of their religion, because you don't believe in their religion, well, then that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's what Bernie Sanders was trying to point to. Right. And, and and they can apply the same standard to Muslims because they believe Jews and Christians will buy it in the fire of hell. Just read the Quran. So, oh. <laughs> well, the, the Christian message is this to love the neighbor as ourselves. How do we love our neighbor? We share the truth. We share the truth that they hate us for. That they need Jesus Christ. They are sinners. That they have broken God's law, the Ten Commandments. The summarization, summarizing the Ten Commandments. That they need a substitute. None are righteous. No, not one. Not one of us. In our own Selves are actually righteous. But if we trust in Jesus Christ, his righteousness is imputed to our account, and we stand just before God, not based on our own selves. We should have pity for people who are lost and blinded in their own sin. We would be just where we... I would be just talking the same kind of nonsense that these two people are in this panel, well, you, you heard Anna Kasparian there, had it not been for the Lord being merciful to me, a sinner, that's all I am here, a sinner saved by grace. I think that it's, Emma points out kind of an interesting way of looking at it, different right. belief systems, and of course, people should be allowed to believe what they want, religious freedom is what this country is founded on, what makes it great. What but, don't believe the gospel. <laughs> oh yeah. Believe whatever you want, but not this. Like, come on, is this... You're not saying that he can believe this. Makes that different, though, where I disagree with Emma, is that he is not just a citizen mm -hmm. believing what he wants. He's going to be... You know, he, this was a hearing, a confirmation hearing for him to serve um, for Deputy Director of the Office of Management and Budget. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that at these hearings, you know, what Bernie Sanders was trying to do was not test his belief system. I don't really think he... I don't think he would care if he was a Christian, went to church. No. He wants to know that he's going to stand up for all Americans, even those who he said in his own words. Yes, but he is, this is any Christian. If you don't believe what, that anyone outside of Jesus Christ is condemned, and anybody in Christ is just before the Father and has been saved, well, you're not a Christian. So yes, it is, it is saying, you're a Christian, you can't be in government stand condemned. What's frustrating about watching that tape, Anna, is that you, you, you hear it a lot, you see it a lot online, well, you can't answer a damn question. And we're seeing yeah. so many of these hearings. I think I've watched more hearings this year than Your entire they're life. everywhere. It's yeah. like a, it's the NBA finals of hearings this year. And the okay, he could have answered it better and he should have just said yes or no, yes, that's what I believe, that's it. And he wanted, look, he wanted to be very, very clear that, because, you know, he was going for that position in the government, that he would respect the dignity. Everybody's creating the image of God. No, 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 we don't care what you say. Do you believe the gospel? Oh, well, you do. You're condemned. Oh, okay, let's, um, 
You're a horrible person. What next? After this. Well, we don't want kind of, we don't what'll come next is that we we don't want people like this in our society. Well, I can't believe he holds that view. He's a horrible person. And if you think somebody's so horrible, you see, there was a recent story there from uh, speaking toward the Robert Spencer, who's a open critic of Islam, and he went there to to um to speak on on that subject and and the Icelandic people were just told, "Oh, he's this horrible. He's like a Nazi. He's a racist. He's a horrible person." So, what does one of the the kind, loving, tolerant leftists do? They they, they poison them. So it's it seems to be going that direction. First, they call you names, just to silence you. And if they can't shut you up, they're gonna go after you. This is the peaceful, loving, tolerant left. Isn't it just wonderful? The more you watch them, the less you learn because, right, because they, they just don't... refuse to answer the question. He's not asking you what your religious beliefs are, right? He's. <laughs> were we watching the same clip? Yeah, yes, he was asking what the religious beliefs were. He was saying, do you believe the gospel, basically? Are you a Christian? That's what it means. <laughs> it's just like, it's not, the gospel isn't brand new that it hasn't been taught by Martin Luther, John Calvin. Augustine, Irenaeus in the early church, Polycarp, go on and on and on and on. This could be confirmed if anybody here read the Westminster Confession of Faith. Asking you well, if that's you... not on trial. Right, exactly. No one's saying that you can't believe what you want to believe. That's right. He's asking, do you stand by the sentence that Muslims do not you can't believe what you believe, just don't believe the sentence. Huh? Simply have a deficient theology. They do not know God because they have rejected Jesus Christ, his son, and they stand condemned. Do you stand by that sentence? You can't answer yes or no. What, I mean, we, the American people deserve better. If, you're, if, you, if he believes that, then dude, stand by this. You wrote this in January 2016. Are you that spineless that if you believe that, you know that there's a, there's a section of Christians that will have his back if you were to stand by that, but you're not even going to come down on an answer? To me, Ed Well, he did. Okay, he didn't answer very well. I will give her that, okay? He didn't answer very well. What he was saying, I'm a Christian. <laughs> this is a Christian faith. And Wheaton College, which he went to, is a Christian college. Well, it claims to be. Anyway, it's gone very liberal over the years. But that's the Christian faith. So it's not like it's brand new or... This is what Christians believe. End of story. As a, as a Christian, I'm a Christian. My faith is so important to me. You ask me... Wow, you know, my faith is so important to me... But I don't want anybody who believes the gospel in government. This this makes a lot of sense. This analyst here who claims to be a Christian. Hmm. And often, I'm not, I don't know what this lady's story is, but often people are in church, a very liberal church, and they pray a prayer when they're six years old, then they're told they're a Christian. Then they go and live like the devil. Never told. Passages. Like every branch that beareth not fruit is taken away, and every branch that beareth fruit purgeth it to bring forth fruit. Now ye are clean, and this is in John 15. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing basically if you're not in christ you're not going to bear fruit if you're born again if you're saved you will produce different fruit from everyone else you will be different the spirit of god will dwell in you how about like matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 not everyone that saith unto me lord lord and also he says, Lord, or twice, they emphatically state that they are Christians, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
but he to do with the will of, of my Father which is in heaven. Now, this is not talking about works-based salvation. This is saying that a Christian will be different, will obey God, because they're born again. Not perfectly, but they will obey God. They will do the will of the Father. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then when I confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. They're condemned to hell for all eternity. This is the Christian faith. Oh, believe whatever you want. Just not this. Do you hear yourself if you're making such ludicrous statements? It's self-contradictory. Believe anything but this. Jenk has put me to the test with this before because I know that it's kind of strange and wonky to have a gay Christian. It's sort of like a fun gimmick. Strange and wonky. You're not a Christian. Um, very quickly, just... I want to get off on this tangent because I've dealt with this in other shows. You cannot be... Well... Anybody, if you, say, if, you're, if you say you're a thief, or you're a fornicator, you're living in adultery, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. Views themselves of mankind. Another word, homosexual. But you are sanctified, you are washed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. The homosexual will not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, <laughs> it's usually people who say, oh, well, I'm a Christian, and well, you don't represent what I believe, which is basically, I can do it, I can live like the devil, I don't believe the gospel, but apparently I am a Christian. Um, I will stand by my, by my beliefs. Now, I also stand by everyone else's right to believe. What do you believe? So you don't believe the gospel. You think it's, you, you seem to have a massive problem with somebody in government believing the gospel. What you're believing is you can just do whatever you want. There's no consequences to it. But they want to believe. But this guy is such a poor representation of how I understand the love of God and how I understand that it's like. To okay, she's about to curse in a second, so I'm going to pause it there. Well, yeah, poor represented how I understand the love of God. Because that's now the standard, how you understand the love of God. And notice how the liberal quote-unquote gay Christian, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the God-hating press. Okay, a few days ago, we're going to talk about the UK election briefly for the last few minutes. Not a lot to say about this, really, but <laughs> car crash for the Conservatives. Honestly, seriously, they, it, it just... If they could have done anything worse, I don't know especially in their manifesto and things like that, but be that as it may, it was a complete car crash for them as a result. They had to go into <coughs> kind of a coalition, it seems, with the DUP, the Democratic Unionist Party, which are in Northern Ireland. They won about 10 seats in Northern Ireland, so they needed, some group needed to form a majority somehow when they've got the biggest majority. Even though I keep hearing Jeremy Corbyn just saying, oh, we won. Um, just for the record, Labour came second in the number of seats. Just like the last time. Now, they won more seats. They still lost. <coughs> so what does the leftists, left, you know, the, the Antifa-like, and I say Antifa, you know, people wearing balaclavas and, well, hopefully not violent like Antifa. <coughs> protested, this is in the Daily Mail. So several hundred protesters gathered in central London to voice their anger at Theresa May's government and her alliance with the Democratic Unionist Party. Why? Because they're Christians. Or at least professing Christians. I don't... I am a bit... 
they're not the strong they haven't been a strong party for a while or weak in a number of areas which they were this is like this is a party back you know for those who remember Ian Paisley he was the leader of the party for a couple of uh, no, a couple of decades really and I remember if anybody listened to Miguel Radio when it started back in 2011 I used to have a clip of him reading Ian Paisley, because he was a minister as well, in a Free Presbyterian church in Northern Ireland, and he, um, you know, just re- he was reading a section out of Daniel, and it kind of seemed to work. And, you know, I've since removed that. My views on, like, being Paisley kind of changed over the years. Much to do with, uh, he was not a, he wasn't really a Calvinist in the proper sense of the term, because of um, his very revivalist tendencies and things like that so i don't think he was the worst person in the world i don't agree with this you know the conflict of interest if you're either in your minister to gospel you're in that position or you're in government you can't be in both christian yeah should be in government i have nothing against that for, i mean anybody who understands my view i believe that christians should be in government that's who should be because they know the difference between right and wrong that's what romans 13 is talking about what other standard but the moral law of God did summarize in the Ten Commandments? So, so the party has changed. It's not the same party it was, you know, when Paisley was involved. But then there was a massive compromise with Paisley. Like, and my and my view of this has changed over the years as well. I remember I thought it was a good thing years ago. That, you know, the Good Friday Agreement, and they got together, and the power sharing agreement, you know, with Sinn Féin. Now I think that's an absolute train wreck and a disaster. Really just handed over the North to the left and the terrorists. Which, you know, Jerry, Jeremy Corbyn had a, was very sympathetic towards the IRA and the very extremist elements that were trying to kill the Thatcher government back in 1984. That's Jeremy Corbyn's wonderful past and very sympathetic towards Hamas and Hezbollah. But that is the left all over. And I, and I don't think anybody in the left would have a massive problem with that. The Labour Party is a massive problem with anti-Semitism. Hyper kind of a criticism of Israel, a standard that would not be applied to any other nation on earth. This whole, well, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm just anti-Zionist. Oh, boy. Often, they go hand in hand. I don't want to say every single time. And look, I'm not a dispensationist. I don't think we need to get people on planes to Israel and all that stuff. But I do recognize it as a sovereign state that is fighting for its life over there. Tiny nation. And if they lose one war, they are obliterated. All these insanely stupid conspiracy theorists that oh, Israel's behind everything and all this. They just sound like Adolf Hitler from the 1930s. It's the same kind of stuff that's spewed out from the Muslims. Is everything Israel does is right now? I you know, There's places to criticize them. Some of the actions were caref- carefully thought out. But if any... But there's people in the Palestinian Authority. They're run by thugs, by the way. Who want to come over there and not just... They don't want a two-party, two-state solution. They want them dead. They want them r- eradicated off the planet. But that's who J- Jeremy Corbyn sides with. And lots of the left. I remember I saw... What was it? I think it was a Celtic game. Um, they were flying a lot of flags for Palestine. Talk about the left just like, hey, jaddies, we're your best friend, even though these jaddies want to kill you too, by the way. But I digress. This is the insanity and the, um, of the left. But anyway, what do they do? Governments form democracy. They vote. They know the system. 
There isn't a majority, so two parties have to come together to protest. <laughs> if you don't like the result, just protest against it. We love democracy when we win. We hate it when we lose. <laughs> yeah, socialist worker. One of the pictures here says, defy Tory rule. Now, the Tories and Theresa May, I'm not a big fan of, and obviously you've seen, if you've watched the last few shows, and not a big fan of Theresa May, wasn't not a big fan, I wasn't a big fan of David Cameron before her. Their policies are suicidal to the United Kingdom. But compared to Jeremy Corbyn, and the Labour Party, and the jihadist sympathizing politicians within their ranks don't have time to get into it here but seriously if you look at some of the shady shadiness going back far enough they're they're linked with ira and stuff like that but where's the protest there's a kind of a a sympathy a sympathizing on the left towards hamas hezbollah all these other all these kind of groups even the ira at times violence revolutionary socialism but a complete hatred disdain a rejection for anyone who doesn't agree with them what's the definition of a, a racist or no a nazi what's the definition of a nazi today somebody who disagrees with you that's it oh no it's, they're not communists anymore no they're pure communists you know but they're just trying to help the people. They're fighting for the ones without a voice. One of the posters here. Stand up to racism. Migrants and refugees welcome here. Yeah, let them all in. Let them take the rape records and bring them sky high. As high as Sweden. They, they're enjoying a great time of it at the moment. Look at Germany. I read out one day in Germany, there was multiple attacks on women, rapes of young children. The, the liberals could not care less about anybody else. They couldn't care less about women. They couldn't care less about the country. All they want to do is just look how righteous I am. Look how, you know, especially, look, you know, we're standing for, you know, we're fantastic. It's arrogance, it's pride. The Christian who believes in Jesus Christ, who truly believes in Jesus Christ, says, I am a filthy, wretched sinner who's been saved by a merciful and forgiving God. That's the difference. We need to keep Europe in prayer. We need to keep the United States in prayer as we see the direction it's going. May God give us strength in this dark hour. May God give us a desire to pray. Do we pray as much as we ought to? No. So, Paul Flynn, may God bless you all.